To me, one of the great dilemmas of trying to add to your chord vocabulary and add more of these sort of chord melody moves to your blues is that you want it to sound jazzy-er, but you don't want it to sound completely like jazz. And one way you can avoid that is by sticking to more dominant seventh chords and using fewer major seventh and minor seventh chords. So here's a quick turnaround example, something you can play over the last four bars of a 12 bar blues in B flat. It's got a lot of melodic motion, but it's based around blues phrasing. And as you'll see, it sounds, to me anyway, much more bluesy than jazzy. All right, so here's the idea, and I'll play it slowly first. So we've got... Big picture, here's basically what's going on, and then I'll come back and we'll break down each chord. We're starting off on the two chord in B flat. That's C minor seven. This is more of a C minor 11 voicing. Then we're going to the five chord F with an F7 sharp nine and just a regular F7. Then we're going chromatically by half step up to the one chord, B flat 13. And then doing the shorter part of the turnaround in bars 11 and 12 with, there's a couple ways you can think about this, but I'm just thinking of it as moving down chromatically. C sharp seven, C seven, B seven, B flat, which is also, this is a tritone, this C sharp is a tritone substitution for G, which is the sixth chord. And this B seven chord is a tritone substitution for F seven. More on that in just a second. So let's get into the voicings themselves, which are almost all entirely on the fourth, third, and second string. So we're gonna start off with C minor 11. It's a shortened version of this chord. We've got the flat third, no, the flat seven. That's the flat third, and here's the 11. So. And then here's F7 sharp nine. It's, again, an abbreviated version of the purple haze chord, just up one fret. So we're in F here with the third, the flat seven, and the sharp nine. And then jumping down to just the ordinary F7 version of that chord, third, flat seven and root. And then we're going to this, which is an A flat 13 chord. Now you could just play the top three strings of the chord, which is the fourth, third, and second string, playing the third, 13, and root. Or you can include the flat seven in the bass. But we're walking up chromatically to B flat 13. So that's bars nine, no, yeah nine and 10. So and then we've got the second half, which is bars 11 into bar 12. And so here we've got, let me just explain it in terms of thinking of the roots all on the sixth string. So here's the flat seven, third and fifth of C sharp or D flat seven. Let's call it D flat seven. And from here, we're gonna play these three notes, but then also go up and play the 13 on top. So that gives us a little melodic motion. So you're hearing this sound. And then the whole thing's just sliding down. So D flat seven, C seven, B seven, and B flat seven to take us home. Now what makes this work, but also make it sound a little bluesier is that ordinarily, the turnaround would be one, six, two, five. And it would be a little more in tune. But basically that would be B flat, F7, C minor seven, F7. But we can do tritone substitutions for the G and the F chord by saying, okay, well a tritone away from F is D flat. We're gonna keep these two notes and move the bass over. So we still have these two important notes of the G7 chord, but now with D flat in the bass. And so since G7 resolves to C, D flat also resolves to C. We can use C7 instead of C minor seven, because that would then resolve to the next chord, 
which is the five chord, which is F7. So we have D flat, C7, but then instead of the F chord, we're gonna move its bass over by a tritone, keep the other two notes. That gives us B7, and then we're down to B flat. So that's how we can play for our turnaround instead of, and then we can put it on the fourth, third, and second string. And then we can add this little melodic movement like that. I did another whole video just on how tritone substitutions work, and I'll put a link to that in the description down below, and you can check that out as well. All right, so that's the idea. If you like the idea of adding in this kind of chord motion to your blues, and you would like to be able to use it as flexibly as you use single note soloing when you play, check out my upcoming workshop, Chord Melody Blues. It's happening on June 29th, and you can learn all about it at the link below or the link on screen. And in the meantime, if you have a question about today's lesson, Leave it for me in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.